Hey everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Tech Intern. So today we're gonna to be talking about, what are we talking about? Today we are talking about how to survive Waterloo, engineering, CS, math, blah, 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 whatever you wanna call it. I want you to take away the things that took me five years to understand and five years to realize. These are not just like some stupid things I came up with just to make a video out of. Apply this stuff to your life, watch this video, apply it to your life, tell your friends if you get anything out of it. I don't care, don't tell your friends. I'm not even trying to like self-promote here. Don't tell your friends if you don't get any value out of this. So if you're going into first year, um, I think you need to know a little bit first about the different residences. I could probably do an entire episode about this and I probably will. Uh, but what I'll say is I was in UWP and I hated it. I hated it so much. I, I found it was really difficult to meet people, you know, in those sweet styles. I know MKB is a sweet style, uh, CLV, which is a nightmare if you're in first year and uh, UWP, all of them are sweet style. I would really recommend against that in first year. Um, I know that Rev can be a bit of a party one, so I would probably recommend against that too, just because like you're gonna have a lot of studying to do and why well, have the temptation. So I guess that, <clears throat> that leaves V1 left. Um, and I think there's a new one on campus that it, I think is next to UWP. That was in construction when I was in school. Uh, I've heard it's a, it's a good option too. So I would consider those two. If you do get put in UWP, if you do get put in Rev, you know, you're gonna be fine. UWP was fine for me. I ended up meeting people, but you know, it did take a little bit of time. I didn't meet anyone my first semester there. So in short, I would say go to something like V1, go to Rev, you'll be fine. So the number one advice I can give you for doing CS or engineering at Waterloo, start assignments the day they come out. That's it, it's that simple. When I was in first year, when I was doing those CS assignments, they're so big, you know, you start them a few days before they're due and the deadlines at like 6 p.m. You're racing up till 6 p.m. You're like, you're sitting in front of the computer, typing like a madman, trying to get any solution to work, submitting your code, seeing if it works, you know, panicking, it didn't work, pull it back down, you know, slam out some more code, submit it again, doesn't work. Like that is the stress that I had through all of my first term. And I kept doing really poorly on assignments. And it was because I kept living from assignment to assignment. So it would be, I'd finish one assignment, I'd finish at 6 p.m. and I'd go, oh, finally I'm done. Now I need a break. And I'd break for, you know, a few days. And then it would be the next thing on the next assignment. I, I kept thinking, how is it possible for this to happen? So I came up with this idea. What if I shift this entire schedule three days over? So instead of starting the assignment three days after it comes out and racing up till the end, I start it right when it comes out and finish three days before it's due. I was like, it can't be that simple, right? It is that simple. That's exactly what happened. And sometimes you might not finish three days before, but you still have that time to seek out help from TAs, from friends, whatever it may be. You still have those three days as buffer. And what you're gonna find is it's completely invaluable. Start it the night it comes out. If it comes out at 9 p.m., don't say, oh, I'll start it in the morning. Start at 9 p.m. Always start an assignment the minute it comes out if you can, but definitely the day it comes out. So one thing uh, it took me a really long time at Waterloo to catch on to was to do assignments alone when you can. So they say this from the very beginning, but uh, you kind of don't believe that it's possible to do the assignments alone. I felt, I felt like that for me, every time I went to a course, it was basically like just jumping between assignments, just trying to somehow scrape by the right answers just to like ward off that danger for that week. You know, that's what it felt like. And you're really trying to get the answers instead of trying to learn. If you can do assignments alone, you'll be much better off. Um, and then once you've you hit a roadblock, that's when you seek help. That's when you seek TAs. That's when you, you know, ask friends, uh, not for solutions, but you know, just discuss things. Another piece of advice, you know, I'd say, don't let a bad mark get you down. What I'm gonna say is a lot of courses are known for trying to weed out first years. And CS, Waterloo, Eng, like it's, it's no different. They're no exception. They try to weed you out. And so what they're gonna try and do is push you quite a lot. And what you're gonna find is that your midterms, um, your class might do so bad, they might even fail the midterm. The average on the midterm might be like 45. It may be like 55, you know, maybe 60 if it's a good year. And 
it's going to really get you down, especially if you're at Waterloo. You're probably a smart person. You probably got 90s in high school. Now you come to a school and the average is 45. Like, how do you survive? You know, I remember this one time in particular, I was out with friends. I had just received a grade and I'm one of those people like, can that the second the grade comes out, I have to look. I was out with friends. We were having a few drinks. I checked my phone and I, I got 35%. My stomach just completely dropped. And I thought, oh, I'm not smart enough to be here. I'm going to fail. And I was just so upset. I, I had to get up and just go straight home. And that's the way you're going to feel if you let, if you think every time you get a bad grade that you're just not smart enough, that's what's going to happen to you. And a lot of people that can snowball. If you just seclude yourself, if you get down from these bad grades, you'll snowball into getting more bad grades. So what I have to say is learn from your mistakes. You know, if you got a bad grade on something, review it, find out why. Maybe you can argue for some marks. A lot of the time you can. I left the window open again. Rookie. Um, and I, I felt like there's no way that we're all going to survive this course. And, you know, we did. Like, if the midterm's really hard, they usually make the final easier. Um, if you do really poorly on one assignment, it's not that big of a deal. Another thing, and this is really important, <laughs> never, and I'm talking never, come into contact with, the, I think they call it Policy 71. That's the academic integrity stuff. Never cheat. <laughs> Never copy someone's code, never look at someone's solution. I know it's gonna be tempting and it's gonna be really tempting. I'm, I'm promising you that. But they specifically set up the assignments to be worth 10% of your grade. Each assignment is gonna be worth like 2% of your grade. Really, 2% of your grade is nothing. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna be tempted because things are gonna be really tough. You'll want to look at solutions. You'll wanna get help. You don't wanna sacrifice that 2%. But what's gonna happen is You'll look at a friend's code, you'll take it, you'll change the variable names because you'll think that's enough and it won't be enough. And what'll happen is they'll slap you with a 5% penalty on your entire grade and you'll fail the assignment. So it's a 7% penalty on your final grade. That 7% is worth almost as much as the assignments in total. But I did have friends that did get slammed by it. And you know, sometimes it, it's the difference between passing and failing a course. And last but not least, I've got some pretty basic advice and this is just stay healthy. Join an extracurricular, you know, maybe go to the gyms there, you know, stay healthy, stay fit, get active, maybe play some sports, uh, go for walks, I don't know. But do something that's outside maybe, do something that gets your heart rate up, you know, that's healthy for you and don't just lock yourself in the room and, you know, let Waterloo get you down because it does it for a lot of people, especially in the winter when you can't really go outside, uh, but you can still go to the gyms. You can still play basketball or something. You have to get out of your, your house or I'm telling you, you'll go crazy. Sometimes when you're stuck on a massive problem, something really hard, if you get up, you go for a walk, you meet some friends, what will happen is halfway through that, you know, activity, you'll get this epiphany and you'll go oh that's what it was that's the, the solution you know your brain works on these things in the back of your mind while you're doing other stuff so and that is really going to do wonders for your mental health because that's a big concern at waterloo so that's kind of all the advice i have and it's not groundbreaking advice but it's seriously stuff that people take for granted i've gotten a lot of feedback on the last waterloo video i did uh, so that's why i'm making this one and if you guys are enjoying the waterloo content uh, please shoot me a message. Let me know. I'd be happy to continue making more of it because Waterloo is a big part of my life. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Tech and Turn, and I will see you next week.